All right. Welcome back to another week of some Haskell programming. Sorry about last week. Had some technical difficulties there with the internet connection, but uh, things are hopefully delightfully back under control, and uh, hopefully it won't be so bad this week, but you're at the mercy of these things. What can you do? Right. So, um, last week we did a little bit of refactoring, a little bit of work to get some modules split apart uh, so we can, as part of implementing the reward system for the game. And I, uh, despite the technical difficulties, went ahead and obviously finished that up and just got it pushed up so you can get the code fresh off the repository here. And if this is your first time joining us, this is what the project we've been working on for the past eh, 12, 13 weeks or so. And we've been building an interactive fiction engine and uh, I'm just calling it Adventure Engine for now, for lack of a better word. Uh, fun little project to explore. You know what it, what what, it, what it's like working on a like a non-trivial kind of Haskell project. Um, certainly not the largest Haskell project out there, or the most complicated or anything like that. But um, yeah, that's what it is. So thanks for dropping by and, and hanging out. Uh, this week, I after I did that refactoring, I was kind of, I think I'm kind of, ooh, thanks for the follow. Who is that? C. Johnson 18. Thanks for the follow. You made a great decision. This is a wonderful stream. I'm amazing and great at teaching Haskell. <laughs> no, I'm just, it's just a lot of fun. Um, so thanks for the follow. Every little follow helps. So it's nice to nice to see you tonight. Um, so this is our our interactive fiction engine here. It's actually using a graphical interface here, using a library called Monomer, and it doesn't look like a whole lot right now. But once we get to the styling and and other things we want, I want to do with this, we'll be able to like display graphics, uh, and maybe have some themes and stuff like that uh, available. Uh, to game authors and things like that, you know, people who want to build games with this, build games with this engine, i.e. me. Um, yeah, so we have like pick up, shovel, right? All works. Drop the shovel. And we can dig with it once we could pick it up. But if we drop the shovel, we can't dig anymore. Right? Only works if you have the shovel. We have saving and loading. All right, so I have the special commands. If I hit save, um, that should save it. Uh, and then we have quit and so on and so forth. All, all good stuff. I'm gonna turn on the fat, the build. I'm gonna do the file watch. See what we got tonight. Hey, great. <laughs> OCaml is great too. Uh, I spent a fair bit of time in that ecosystem and learning learning OCaml as well. Inria, uh, I don't know if they still run it, but a bunch of years ago they had a fantastic online course uh, for OCaml where they had a really good online checker uh, for checking programs, yeah, which I found immensely helpful. Uh, I later did, when I started getting to Haskell, I, got, I did the course from the Glas University of Glasgow through a platform called Future Learn. And not, not as intense, didn't have an online checker, but uh, it was a pretty good course too. Uh, but that's awesome. Yes, welcome to Haskell and, and following along on a little Haskell project. Do you do any Haskell programming or uh, just kind of checking it out? Um, so I'm going to go to my uh, engine here, and there's a couple of things I kind of wanted to do while I was here. Um, so if I look back at the refactor and the last few commits. Cool, yeah, 99 problems, right on. Cool, yeah. 
I think that's that's like a, a thing I started on too. I did like little little you know problem sites and stuff like that when I was when I was learning both both OCaml and Haskell. Just a good tool to have. Right, so the last bit of work we did um, broke things out into a bunch of different modules, but crucially, I think the most important part of this change, or series of changes, was adding a, a new layer to our Monad Transformer stack. Um, this up game state, update game state, Function is update game function takes the event from the UI and says, "Okay, up, it's time to update the game now." And it used to be that we just ran some computation with exceptions, run accept. Uh, instead, we added another layer on top of that state. So we have to run accept and run the state. All right. And that's sort of what happens with the whole monad transformer thing. Uh, explained this a few times on the stream, but basically we stack things together. There's some monad at the bottom, usually IOs at the very, very bottom. And then you can run IO with some kind of other effect on top, like exceptions, which is what we were doing before. Um, and then we added uh, IO with state and exceptions on the very top. Well, the ordering does matter on where how you stack these things. Uh, and I think running with uh, exceptions at the very top and state underneath and then IO at the bottom is generally the right-ish way to go. There might be ex edge cases or exceptions where you want to try a different ordering to them. Um, but this is usually pretty good. So this gives us, when we have this Case match now, uh, we get a tuple back of the uh, ex exception result. So it's a left or a right. We translate it to a left or a right, uh, either with an error or a new world state. And crucially, we get uh, a new game state along with that, the final game state of evaluating this whole program, this whole computation, this whole stack of things, and which is what we use in the right case. In the, which is the success case and to update the rendering and, and all that sort of stuff. And we use that because we get the event log, uh, which we use to determine the different um, rewards that can be had to the system. But now that we have this, and what I'm getting at here is that I wanted a while ago to be able to rewrite some of our... Um, code to use that state layer and the reason for that is we have the game state object here which is now the actual state we're using in this layer to keep a copy of the world the list of scenes that have been rendered uh, the input buffer all right so the input buffer is passed from the ui into the game state um, all those characters that is are added and typed in. We have the list of potential errors that you can log to the UI and the event log. So this is like all of the things that we did in response to user input, right? the things that have happened in the past of the game as it has been played. And we have a lot of these functions up here, like um, get exit current room, get object in current room, things like that, that just run on some except T. I know nothing about the state layer, but I kind of want to make them know about the state layer uh, on some level, because I want to be able to move the user or write a little tiny program inside this monad stack that can move a user and then do something else or like move something to the inventory and then move the user to blah, 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 or remove the object from the room, put it in the user's inventory. And right now we do that with a lot of pattern matching on the world. 
and kind of like coming up with a new world. So an example of that is where we get a, a little bit of kind of yeah, code is um, things like this here on line 433 and 434. Right, we have a world prime where we take a version of the world where the log messages contains the success message appended to the rest of the messages. And then we have the world prime prime which unlocks the door of the world prime. Right? And then we move the player, which actually returns another version of the world. So like this handle walk also has no concept of this, um, the state layer. And so the game state has this world in it, but we're pulling it out and we're manipulating a whole bunch of world Whereas we're putting, we're returning the world back from handle walk, and then something else is going to update the game state and return that new version of the world into it. All right. And that is happening in uh, update game. All right. So once we've once we've rendered the world, once we've updated the world, we've rendered it. Uh, then we return a new game state where uh, the scenes are set to um, the rendered scene and the rest of the others. Uh, the world is updated right, to the new world state that we returned from the handler. Right, This uh, handle prime function. And the input buffer is reset back to empty. Um, which is fine, but it would be it would be super nice, I think. And maybe this isn't like a big deal, but I think it would just be nice to um, be able to write this more directly as a series of changes to the to the state layer. Uh, so I think that's what I'm gonna work on tonight. See if I can get that going. Uh, so there's drop, look, pick up, for example. Um, and this is the, the main one, handle lock. For, and this, that's kind of like me. They did the unlock door stuff here. And I was kind of like a little bit frustrated with having to to do it this way, even though like it works, it's fine. You kind of move on. You get the, the first thing to, to go to work. Um, keeping the, the code base healthy, you know, you kind of have to go back over this stuff once in a while and you know, compress things down and, and make things that now that it works, make it cleaner, make it more elegant, make it easy, make it easy to under, easier to understand, easier to work with. So what I want to be able to do is in this do block, um, I want to have some kind of action that like adds a log message. Right. Um, add world log message. Uh, success text, I think, is the one I want. And, and that would do essentially this, but it would reach into the game state and, and through the state layer and, and do this for us. All right, similarly with unlock door, I, want, I don't want to have to bind a new world here. I just want to say, okay, and then unlock the door and then move the player. Right, so I don't have to pass the world into move player. I just want it to reach into the state and do it. Because right, the state knows where the player is and all that sort of stuff. And that's that's kind of ideally what I want to have uh, work. I'm just going to yank that out. This is the program I want to have. Uh, we're going to get a bunch of type errors. That's fine. We're going to just pull up our list of type errors. We're going to just fix them. As we go along, so we don't have a, a function called add world log message. Let's go and define that. I'm just going to go over to my errors here, and I'm just going to literally pull that in. We're going to have to update the type of this function as well, which is going to give us a whole bunch of other stuff um, to work with. So it's going to be fun. 
But once we get through the weeds, it's going to be nicer. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we've got modified object, get ID, put object in inventory. We're at world log message. Let's just add them after get player inventory. Why not? So I'm going to go ahead and do this and leave it undefined for now. What is it going to return? Does it really need to return anything? No. All right, we just need to append the message and it can return unit because the game state will have it. The uh, UI can pull that out of the game state to render it so we don't have to return it to anybody. So uh, let's pull out the parameter. Let's go message. Now we don't have the state layer here involved right now. Uh, we could continue this trend of mm, concrete, a concrete stack. Right, like this. Or we could put it as a constraint as well. You could put it uh, behind a fat arrow like this is another style that you'll see a lot uh, where we'd have like monad state on M like this and monad, probably monad as well. Uh, that's also a very common pattern to see. Um, neither is terrible. Like, it's not morally right or wrong. I don't know if I'm using that right, but it works. So if we wanted to do it that way, we don't have to put the state T M here in the signature. We can just put M. Now it's in, now it's implied by the constraint that we have some monad state, a state layer sort of thing. Okay, now I can begin some kind of definition here. Okay, so we can do a do block here. We can pull out the game state. We have a question. Uh, so Johnson, let's see Johnson said, asks, so the first parameter to accept T is an exception. Second is a monad. Yes, that's correct. The first is the exception type. The second is the monad. Traditionally, and by convention, usually M. You could also just call it monad as well to make it more clear. But by convention, it's usually just M because sometimes these type signatures can get pretty long. And then the third one, yeah, is the return type. And all of the monad transformer style type classes and types follow the same pattern. And so you notice if I put the state T in here, um, it puts the game state as the second parameter and then M is the third, right? And so this would be like our layer on top of M and then the accept T would be the layer on top of the state, right? Whereas when we do it with the constraints, we're just saying let um, type class instance resolution figure out um, things um, and just let it know that it has this in here, this constraint on M. Okay, so this means now that when I go in my do block here, I can, I'm now in a accept T block where I have access to these uh, state actions one layer down. So if I wanna do a state thing, I gotta lift it into my accept T my accept context where I'm operating right now, where my do block is. 
Um, I always, one thing I kind of want to do and I think would make monadic code a little bit easier to read is to have like visual coloring of do blocks, so you know which context is in. Uh, but I don't know how to do that with Emacs, or if that's even possible. <laughs> but I think it would be kind of neat to see. Okay. Right. Um, so in that now we can do we can get the game state back out. Um, we can get anything we need out of the game state, and we're gonna get the messages, the game messages. I guess four parameters I might be wrong on that, but then I'm gonna lift uh, get get is a method that comes from the monad state or the at type class one of those um oops, that's the wrong syntax though my bad that should be parentheses around the whole thing here okay i'm gonna put a hole at the end just so we can get rid of that type error here uh, five arguments, yeah, okay, so I gave it four by accident, beep. I think messages is that one. Yeah, so now we have messages, list of text. No, 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 what buffer was I looking for? I was doing the engine. Yeah. Oh, well, that's errors, sorry. Um, now I need the world, because i got to reach into the world to get that. So actually, let me jump back over to there. Uh, we don't want that. We actually want the world. So maybe a mistake here in the design of my records. I could probably move the move the, the world log messages up into the game state. I think that would probably be a better place for it. Um, but nice, the nice thing about this interface is that we'll be able to change up the game state a little bit easier. Um, you know, do that, no problem. And only have one place to update. Now once we convert all of this. And refactor. So now that we have the world, uh, we can get... Um, So this is more like a modify. There is a mod. Mm, a way to modify this too. Anyways, let's just let's just um. Yeah, let's let's bind out the. Mm, what am I thinking here? What should I do? I think, yeah, there's the log messages. Hmm. Why don't we just nail this as part of it too? Uh, no, 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 let's, let's do that in a separate, separate step. Let's, let's keep the, the goal of our refactor going and keep it small. We don't want to get carried away here and do too many changes at once. Okay, so if we have W here, then we want to have, um, I'm gonna pattern match that out. Uh, just make, keep a reference to the game state in scope as well. Okay. So now um, I have G in scope, which is the whole game state record. Uh, I've got W in scope, that's the world in the game state. And from here, I should be able to do the update on the world to add the message to the log messages inside that record. And then put that back into the state with the, the put function. So I'd have to lift that state function, that state thing to put. Uh, I got to put a new G in there where 
the game state world is equal to um, W where the, game, uh, the world um, log messages. Message com uh, cons on to uh, world log messages of W, say. Okay, and that should type check just fine. Uh, let's jump to our other type error, which is down here now. So unlock door, right? Uh, we don't need the world prime argument for that anymore, technically. We would just need the exit ID. An unlock door would be responsible for getting the world out of the state, doing the unlock door stuff. Um, just fine. So let's go fix that function. Uh, I gotta jump to the definition of unlock door. That would probably help. Oh, it's down here. Okay. Yeah, so I explicitly wrote a type down here for that. I did the same thing. Where I'm going to do monad uh, state, game state on M. Just bring that over to the left a little bit. Stack these up. Okay, so then we can get rid of the W because we can get that. Uh, it could return unit as well. Uh, I think we could still use modify exit there with the W because modify exit returns a world. But I think it does, well, it doesn't accept T. We're in accept T. So yeah, that should be fine. Um, we'll just do here and we will. Uh, Game state with get and where W would be the game state world of game state. We could put game state uh, where where the game state world is equal to w prime. Does that work? GHC says no. Uh, GHC says no because mm -hmm. okay. I think this is this is a little bit hidden. It's modify exit here, maybe. Uh, let's see, modify exit. Uh, could match expect to type entity ID exit with actual type world. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to remove the uh, parameter there. Okay, so that, that gets rid of that type error. Now we just have to deal with move player. Down here. 
Similar thing. Um, on a state, uh, game state of M. Well, we can eliminate the world parameter. Okay. So this is kind of actually adding a little bit of code, but I think we can move these functions up to make them more general. And that might make it a little bit more paddleable. Or just having lenses for game state. It's actually a good question. Do I have lenses for game stakes? That might make it a little bit easier to, to do this. Uh, game state. I believe I do. Yes, I do, of course. Wheat. That's good. I like that. Okay, so that should make this pretty. Actually, even maybe the other code I just refactor it when we get when we get ready. Okay, so um, yeah. So we can do, hmm. Let's remember my lens foo here. Um, I want the the world to be, to be set to. Now, how do I reach into the world? Kind of combine, compose that with um, their room. to be set to that. Does that make sense? Maybe because I don't have lenses for world. No, I do. What would they be? Do I have to do it like this to get access to it? Breaks a bunch of other code when I rename that, of course. Let me just globally rename it. Oh, oh I meant to globally replace that. I had it highlighted. Okay. 
Uh, oh, I meant, probably meant dot tilde. That's the set to or the setter function. Okay, it doesn't think that's in scope right now. Right, so I have the splices at the end of a file. So I can't use them internally here unless I move them up. Let's move them up. And that's a bunch of errors, probably because... Oh, splices. Because splices, that's why. So this is just using a bit of temple, template Haskell magic to generate... Well, not magic, it's macros. Um, to generate code. And these make this make field fields thing comes from the lens library, and it generates uh, a bunch of functions for us. I'm trying to use here. Uh, one of them would be um, mainly used for getters and setters. I would say you can do lots of things with lenses, but that's primarily what I use them for. Um, so getters and setters, like you'd find in like a Java or a C++ kind of thing, but in a functional kind of way. Um, so there are a bunch of functions where you can like look lens focus in on a deeply nested structure and get a value out or you can have a setter or you can set some value in a deeply nested structure and that's very very convenient uh, you can write them all out by hand if you want but it's much much more convenient because they can be derived fairly mechanically uh, for almost any record type uh, and you can do it with this make fields thing but the way the template Haskell stuff works is it kind of splices it right in where it finds it. And sometimes this can mess with your file. Um, I got the game state one there and the world. Where do I define world? Probably a little higher up. Oh, did I accidentally delete verb alias map? What did I do? No, it's still there. Uh, oh, I might need to put that type definition, that type alias before the splice. <laughs> um, so that's kind of annoying when you use template Haskell. Uh, we'll jump over to world. Uh, 
And game error isn't in scope. Why isn't that in scope? That's weird. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back on that. Back out, back out, back out, back out, back out, back out. That's taking too much. Too much thinky space. deal with that later okay let's just do it the long way then so it might add it we might add a bit of code in this refactor but we'll we'll go back and compress it down if we can um so then moving the player yeah, we just have to update the world player room um well, we know how to get out the game state and the world from the game state already. That's pretty straightforward. W and a bunch of other things. And five. And we can lift, I suppose we'll put G where um, well, we'll make world prime. Because there's also some pretty, I don't know if it'll apply to us here, but there's some pretty neat stuff you can do with lenses and the state monad, or the state monad as well, yeah. Some ha help, handy helpers to make it even look like procedural object-oriented code, as you might find um, in other places. It's pretty, pretty weird, but pretty neat to see. Uh, let's see, move player still has problems, type problems. Yep. Okay, let's fix this one here. Mm hmm. So it's expecting a world. Because handle walk returns a new world. All right. And that's because we're pushing, in this model, we're pushing the idea of updating the state higher up than down here. Um, handle lock here is pulling out, is getting the world that's already pulled out for it and just returning a new version of that. Um, whereas we're now kind of by this refactor, kind of pushing down the, the state closer to handle lock so it can go in and grab, grab what it needs out of it instead of us threading it through the function arguments. Um, so technically handle walk and then by extension handle verb will not, which we already have monad state on handle verb as well. Um, yeah, we won't, we can get rid of having to return world there. Which means these functions will be responsible for, for doing their, their own thing and putting the world back into the state. Technically, I believe we should be able to do that. So we're going to have to, we're going to introduce a bunch more type errors for all of these. And uh, handling walk, for example, we can at least fix that one. We got rid of a uh, bit of getting rid of W. Uh, lenses. They're not a category theory concept themselves, um, but they do have laws, like mathematical laws. And I think some of them might be stated in, or can be understood using category theory, but I don't think it's required. Um, they come from the Cometaverse which is colloquially return, referred to as the Cometaverse. 
in the Haskell ecosystem. Because um, the author of this and a bunch of other libraries, his name's Edward Komet, real nice person. Um, talked to him at a few um, conferences and stuff, and not not afraid to to use these sorts of things to make libraries and good libraries. I think it's a good thing to have these laws, um, even though they can be a little bit harder to understand. Uh, you don't, th and it, you, you profit from learning them. You definitely do, uh, but it does take a while to, to figure them out. So it's hard to see it on here because it's just so tiny. Let's see if I can blow it up here. That's not much better. Okay. Um, so a lot of them have, this is kind of like the map of them. Uh, they have a whole bunch of stuff. And I don't even understand this this most of the time. Um, the important ones, I think, it just knows that there's like setter, um, which sets things, right? Um, so the set is the named version of the dot tilde operator as I was using. The dot tilde is just the short version of set. And that's your set function. So it takes some some value and, well, some lens and some value, and then can look into the record. You pass it the final argument to update in the right place and give you a new version back of your, your type T. Right. Um, so you see these monad state here once. Monad state SM as a constraint on this one means we can use this plus equals with a monad state like structure. Right. So if I have a lens into a monad state, I can do, if my state has some field in it that I understand as plus equals, a numeric value you can plus equals it so I can have like an increment counter thing so it's it looks a lot like the C kind of style or procedural style increment operator right multiply equals minus equals same thing um, and then you have dot equals as well um, as a as a setter into the state so some field in there we could actually use that and refactor if I can get the splices to work without breaking the file, <laughs> uh, we should be able to use like dot equals, for example, to set the world field of the game state and use that as a setter, setter function. So um, there's plenty of like tutorials around this because it's like it was a very big concept when it landed. And I feel like it existed in a time and a place in the Haskell community where people were getting really excited about category theory um and so like there's a whole there's quite a there's an ecosystem of these kind of libraries that exist um so it looks very very intimidating and it can be but i don't think you have to know all of it to make use of it just using i only almost always just use setters and getters and that's it nothing else for the most part, occasionally I'll use a traversal or a prism, but almost always just those two. Welcome. It's a, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it does have learning curves for sure. Uh, but I think they're worth, in my experience, they're pretty worth it. When I first started out, I didn't know anything about this stuff, and I've encountered a lot of really cool, cool things. A lot of le learned a lot of neat stuff that has really like changed how I think about programming and how I approach structuring programs and things like that. Um, so, like the way I like to think about monadic code and the way I like to think about these stacks is building like little mini interpreters and kind of building the the programming language you want to solve a problem, which is a common thing I did a lot in Common Lisp, for example, is a very sort of way of thinking in that language as well. 
but this is a little bit more principled. I, I find you have the type checker to make sure that you're not keeping you honest, right? You're not, you're not breaking any rule, your own rules. Uh, which is why I think laws, I was mentioning at the very beginning, laws are really, really important. Um, you don't have to know them to use a library, but they're, they're very important when you're building a library. Because I think one of the things I really care about is like correctness, right? And whenever people say they care about correctness, you have to ask, well, correct with respect to what, right? And often, at least in the case of program codes, you want to correct with, an, with respect to some specification or some set of laws or some relation between data and, and functions or something like this. Um, and that's, you know, if the, then you can say, then you can judge, you can say, okay, yes, the implementation of this function is correct or it's not because it obeys some law or it doesn't. And that should be provable. Um, so you get a lot of tools for doing doing that kind of stuff big, baked into the language. Whereas when you're doing that kind of stuff in C or or whatever, your your ability to verify that that these laws hold for your code has to be done by some other means of checking. Oh, great! Yes, yes. Me, oh, I love that stuff so much. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, refs, refs, refs are hard to to reason about. Uh, but OCaml has some pretty good stuff in the, the proof ecosystem, um, especially for verify, validating refs and things like that. Um, separation logic sounds like something that would be useful for that. The, is it the Iris, Iris framework? Uh, I can't remember if it's called Iris or I think it's Iris. Uh, yeah, separation logic framework in in, in Coq. Yeah, well, that's that's neat. Yeah, so like Haskell's not like perfect at this stuff. It's not like amazing, but it's just. The bar isn't terribly high, in my opinion. For like practical industrial languages, the bar isn't very, very high. When it comes to like research languages, I, this stuff, a lot of the stuff is being done in, in other languages kind of blows Haskell's out of the water. Yeah, it's, I need to dive much more deeper too. A friend of mine wants me to help him work on porting or making a version of of a separation logic framework for lean uh, which is a theorem prover that we both like to use uh, lean doesn't have one yet um so he ends up doing a lot of that stuff in in cock for now which is which is great works fine but um yeah lean somehow has some other desirable properties as well so it'd be nice if they both had it Right, so continuing on our refactoring adventure. Excuse me. Uh, let's look at. Uh, I have a math background in that I just like it, <laughs> but I have no. I never went to school. I have no formal training or anything like that. I just read and learn and um, like to work on math problems and through books and papers as like people like to do crosswords recreationally um, but a lot of the a lot of math useful math I learned for my day-to-day -day job comes I learned a little bit from even learning Haskell and functional programming and there's a lot of crossover there <laughs> yeah, and you know programs proofs and all that stuff so um, yeah uh, so we can we have to remove w from all of these because it has to have the same argument when we pattern match that's the same number of arguments let's get rid of that and, and this should have two as well uh, Put 
fix all of those. I'm gonna have to fix all of their types. I think I should fix a handle lock case until we and we got to fix up in the stuff in here. Um, so why don't I just do that? This is going to be a big, big refactor, a pretty fat one, but uh, it's just one of those things. I guess one of the neat things about Haskell and one of the kind of drawbacks is that you can do these sort of like merciless refactors and feel pretty confident that once you come out the other side, if it compiles, it's still going to have a lot of the same behaviors and properties that you would expect. But in software development best practices or, or not best practices, but software development practices, I generally like to keep refactors in like small, tiny movements. Which we're usually able to do with Haskell, but sometimes when you do high level stuff like this, um, they kind of really trickle trickle up and end up with these like big fat commits which I don't really like but what can you do it's a, it's sometimes a sign that you just have like too many things pushed down too far I guess if that makes sense um, so if you have things messed at a finer grain uh, your types separated a finer grain and you're able to make kind of these smaller changes in in isolated ways but um, this one's kind of a big one like handle verb dispatches down to handle walk which dispatches down to this so you have like kind of this tree of constraints of types that, that are all fitting together here um okay so let's fix this one do, 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 do. Yes, we don't need to pass world into move player anymore, and that's fine. Okay, this type error here, uh, it's not a pure anymore. Uh, we have a fun. well, we don't have one for error, oh, for log messages we do, yes. This can be replaced by our new handy dandy add world log message um, with air text. I think I should fix that. And it does. Okay, and then this one it doesn't take world. We know how to fix that equation. That's good. Okay. I think that that gets rid of all the type errors out of handle walk. And we just have to go through probably for the most part, just fix a few types in here, get rid of some arguments and that kind of stuff. So let's jump over to the next one. Um, it's not actually going to jump to the... So here, right, no more worlds as an argument threaded through. Instead, we're going to pull the world out uh, from the state. And we're going to put the world back in. So this is where I think our, our lenses will, or would make this code a lot nicer. So we're going to do some, we're going to do some stuff. Yeah. Game state. Well, we know how to pull the world out. All right. We lift the get function in our accept context, reach down into the M inside accept T to the state. And we get this function get on that state, which gives us the current state. Okay, so we know how to pull that out. Then we 
Yeah, we're gonna fix that error because that's uh equations need to match. Number of arguments. Oh yeah, I gotta fix a type too. Let me pull this over to the left a little bit more so I can see it easier. Pow, 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 pow. A little, little breathing room there. Good, good, good. Okay. Now our next error is here, right? We have to put the state back in with the new version of the world, which is just no problem. Uh, but instead of this equation where we do pure, we're going to have to, let's just bind that with a let. Mm -hmm. For some reason it wasn't liking that so far, but it should be fine. Oh yeah, there we go. That's better. And then we can lift the put command with the game state uh, G, right? Where uh, state world equals V prime. So hopefully, hopefully you can see that you know we're doing this this kind of operation a lot now that we're getting rid of. Um, path threading the world in and returning the world um, we're lifting our next state of the world our computed state of the world it back into the game state again uh, we're kind of lifting and putting g in here where we're changing this field and lenses when we use if i can get those to work in the next step we should be able to you know make this a little more terse this pattern of uh, G where game state world equals W prime. Um, we could we could just have it in one line, or we don't have to bind W prime and get rid of a game uh, get rid of a variable binding, which would be which is nice. I find like there's a limited working brain capacity for me with bindings. And there's too many variable bindings. Like I can handle maybe five, seven. Any more than that, and then I have to like go back and read, and just too much work. So the fewer bindings, the better, I find. Any within reason, you know, somewhere between zero and, and five is good. Like we got we got quite a few here, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like we're we're getting pretty high up there. Seven, some are eight, somewhere around there. Not bad, but not the greatest. So we can get rid of one of them. That'd be good. Get rid of a few more once we have better helpers uh, with our new that can reach into the state layer now. That'll be this will be this is going to be a long term refactor. It's going to take a few steps um, before we start seeing the code shrink. So sometimes when you're doing refactoring, code grows a little bit first before it shrinks. That's the nature of the beast. Okay, so this handle pickup, I. Uh, I think that gets rid of the type errors for that one. Not quite, not quite. What's the problem here? Um, too many arguments, it thinks. Too many arguments. Oh. Well, that's no good. Uh, let's see, list of text to accept T. That should be the same number of arguments. Hmm. Args list of text. Oh, I forgot to change the type signature again today. No oh, args, yeah. I don't know, what am I doing here? I don't know. What's going on? 
I must be missing something here. Handle lock, handle pickup. Oh, there we go. And this one. And it walks too few our arguments. Odd, I must have accidentally uh, reverted some changes. Okay. Or we didn't do a handle walk yet. I don't know. Uh, some It's weird. Okay. So, yeah. Let's do that. Game state. One, two, three, four. Lift gets. Cool, see drones in 18. Have a great evening. Thanks for stopping by and, and chatting and hanging out. Have a good week. Okie doke. Okay, yeah, that, that fixes handle lock almost, except we have to get rid of that. And that I must I must have accidentally reverted something. That I didn't mean to revert. Okay, so handle pickup's good. Handle drop now. Let's fix that. It doesn't take a world anymore. That's a parameter. Let's remove that parameter. Skidoo. We need the monad state. Game state on M. Let's just format this a little nicely. Okay, and then we need to pull it world into scope. We do that with game, we know how to do that. Very straightforward. All right, we lift get, and we get world into scope. Then we're gonna update world. Now we just have to make sure that we bind world to like say W prime. And then we can do put, lift put. G where the game state world is equal to um, W prime. Uh, right, because we have to turn this to units. That should be good to go. Duper duper, that should fix handle drop. Let's do the same for examine. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Get rid of the world parameter. We don't need it anymore. We're going to handle our own state. Okay. Need world in scope. We know how to bring world into scope. We bind it like this. And we run this action. We don't need that action to take a world. Oh, so we need to update it as well. Um, my 
have state with game state on M. And we'll bring that over to the, we don't need to pass in the world anymore. Okay, we get rid of the world there. Okay, so this one's gonna be, we have a nice helper function for this that we can run in the scope. The only part we need is the game object itself. We can get rid of messages. And we can world log message. Uh, object, it's object description, right? Game object description. And we are going to need a reference to the world to do these lookups. We know how to get the world in scope. Uh, I don't remember the name of my own function. What did we call it? Add world log message. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that makes that work. And then examine in rooms, similar similar situation. No problem. So monad state, the game state on M. And we'll bring that we can get rid of the world parameter. And it can return unit as well. Which means we don't need that in scope there. We can get it this way. We know how to get the world back in scope. We do it like this. And don't need that. And we have our helper function for adding the describe game object message. with add world log message. Um, I am going to prefer writing it this way, actually. Also won't let me. Oh, well, it should, yeah. Same with up here. Sweet. Okay, examining room, good, good, good. That means handle exam is good. Let's do handle take. Monad state. Game state of M. And pull that over there. Get rid of the world parameters. We don't need it anymore. You can return unit. Okay, we had W in scope as world, and we can add, get it back. We know how to do that. Uh, we're gonna have to reformat things a little bit first. So we can get Game state W in scope. Got to bind, and we do that with binding at lift of get. 
Yeah. And then instead of pure now, uh, we can bind uh, W prime to the world where this is all a thing. And we can put that state back in with lift.put g um, where game world state is equal to w prime. Our game state world. That would probably be a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. That's totally a thing. Okay, I'm very mechanical, but we're getting through it. We're almost there, hopefully. Let's do this one. Uh, monad state. Get rid of the world parameter. Don't need that anymore. Uh, we need to bring world a binding for world into scope. We know how to do that. We're going to need the game state like this world one, two, three, four. We bind it with the lifting our yet function to get the state out of the inner monad into our accept T layer. Then uh, let's see. Fail message. That's pretty simple. We have a helper for that. Fail message. Uh, so add world log message. Fail message. All right, we have to remove world here as well. All right, da, da, da. and that should go. Okay, uh, pure here doesn't work anymore, right? We have to put the new state of the world back in. So we're gonna change the pure into a binding world prime. And then we're gonna, ooh, this one's a pure one. So we're not gonna do block, we're gonna uh, put, G where world um, game state world middles world prime. Okay, and we have this situation again a little bit down here. So another pure. Uh, so we can know how to fix that. All right, we can change this equation to bind world. Uh, prime, 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 okay. Put uh, G where game state world equals And we have another one. So exactly same, exact same transformation of this equation as well. This one is in a do block, so we don't need the in state in there. Uh, and we can just uh, put g game state world equals world prime prime prime. Okay. That's all I use. Let's see, what's our next type error here? Oh, we still have handle use, handle look. Okay. Miss those. Okay, handle look, no problem. We know what we're doing now. Uh, monad state, game state of M, boom. Bring that over, get rid of the world parameter. We don't need it anymore. Change the return type, we don't need to return the world anymore either. Get rid of the W argument. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. OK, 
here w interesting um, unchanged and when we have args uh, we parse the the look command look arguments if we have in as one of the words and we look in container otherwise it's a regular look you're looking in the room Okay, look in the container, doesn't need the W anymore. So we can get rid of that. Uh, we'll fix look in container in a moment. Right now, oh, exit current room, same thing. I'm gonna fix that. And we know how to fix this equation here with pure W, we bind it. And we can lift, put G. Now we're gonna have to get the W into scope here. Uh, game state world equals W prime. Let's bring G into scope and world W. Uh, so we know how to do that. Uh, that's game state W, one, two, three, four. We bind it with lift get. Okay, now we're getting some of the type errors I kind of expected here, and then that's all cleaned up. Oh, in fact, actually, uh, we didn't even need to do this because it's just doing the log messages with the exit description. So we know how to fix, transform this equation we can use our good old helper, add world log message. Okay. So now we just have to fix look in container and exit current room, which also we got to push down this state constraint down to them. So let's do look in container first. Well, what do we do here? We know what to do. It's very, very mechanical. Monad state. Game state. M. How are we doing on time? Pretty good, pretty good. Let's get rid of the world argument. Text and return. We don't need that anymore either. Uh, we get rid of the W as an argument, but now we need to get it back in scope. We know how to do that. Game state, W, mm -hmm -hmm. we bind it from the lifting of the get function to get the state. Now W's back in scope, everything's good. We do look in container. Uh, you have a type error, that's interesting. Okay, we can fix that one. In a minute, uh, let's see, this line here is updating the world log messages. We know how to fix that. We have a helper for it. Add world log message. Okay. We'll do look in container now. It doesn't have a type, it probably should, just to be consistent. Is a monad state, game state of M and a monad of M implies that we have a function that takes a container. Uh, it's game object or something 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 um, but I'm just gonna put a dummy type in there and GHC will tell me I'm wrong and tell me what the type is uh, we get an accept T game error of M of unit okay Okay, it's just container. Good.
Okay, so this function needs a W in scope. It doesn't have a W, but we know how to get one. Game state. W, one, two, three, four. Find it with the lift of get to get the current state. Now W is in scope. Everything else should work. We have this. Um, this expression is constructing uh, the message, but we have a helper function for appending it to the world log messages. Pardon me. We just need to pull this out. Add world log a message. There we go. Okay, do looking container done. Exit room, exit current room. Uh, we know how to fix this, yeah. On a state, game state of M. And let's pull that over, get rid of the world argument. Just needs the text. Mm, I still want to return that tuple, so that's fine. And let's get rid of the W argument. But now we need a W in scope. We know how to get a W in scope. Now we can get the game state. Two, three, four. By lifting, binding it to the lift of the get. Cool, that all type checks now. Jump back to where we hear handle verb. Doesn't need specifically the world passed in anymore. And this doesn't actually need to return the world anymore. Okay, just have to update handle use. We're almost there. Very, very close. Okay. I can taste it. It's on my lips. So close. Monad state. Game state. Of M. Get rid of the world parameter. We don't need it anymore. We don't need to return world anymore, just unit. Get rid of the world argument. We still need a world in scope. We know how to get a world in scope. Let's bring it in. We take game state, world, one, two, three, four. We bind it to the lift of get. So everything else should be fine. We have this eval object interaction. That's fine. It takes a world argument and all that stuff, but it's not returning the right thing. We could also push this down further down to that one. Uh, probably could. Yeah, we'll, we'll update that in a second. Go to this branch here. Uh, it does this pure, this kind of equation. We know how to append messages now. We have a helper function for that. So let's use it. Add world log message. I don't know how to do that. Eval object interaction. Let's fix this function. Well, Let's add the constraint. Monad state. Game state of M. Get rid of the world parameter. We don't need it anymore. We don't need to return world for this one. Take the world out of the arguments, but we still need a world in scope. We know how to get one. 
we get it out of the game state by taking the game state, pattern matching out the world, and binding that from lift get. Okay, do object command now. Same thing. We gotta push this constraint down again. So here we go. Take the world, doesn't have to return a world. Uh, it needs a world in scope. We know how to get one. Hmm. Yes, it's fine. Let's keep going. Uh, at game state, world one, two, three, four, binding lift, get. This is a hairy, hairy bit of code. Okay, uh, we have an equation here we do know how to replace and fix. Uh, unlock error is what we want in the error log messages. So we just use add world log message, unlock, 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 error. Okay, that throws an error, that's fine. And then this this one here, uh, we know how to update this kind of equation. Uh, we take out the pure, we make it a binding. Uh, this is not in a do block. That's in, it's an expression. And we replace it with lift, put G where game state world is equal to world prime. Yeah, that should, that should be good. Okay, no, nope, not quite. Ah, uh, we need do here. Okay, what else are we dealing with here? Okay, exit current room. Okay, let's fix exit current room then. Hmm, okay, it return, yeah, that. Oh, it doesn't take a world anymore, that's right, yep. Oh, we're so close. Look at those type errors. That list is getting smaller. Yeah. Okay, so our handle function doesn't actually return the world. I'm there. Uh, we get we can pull it out of the game state now. Oh. That and oh, forgot to add the context to uh, monad walk here or to walk and a walk. Ugh. Okay. Monad state, game state, M. Whew. Oh, that was a refactor. But it's going to be a good one. Okay, pull that over, pull that over. Yeah, should be good. Okay, now what do we got? Some unused warnings, that's good. Okay, not used, let's get rid of it.
Not used. Let's get rid of it. Let's see. Not you. What's this one? Uh, G. Get rid of it. Hmm. We don't need this at all. Sometimes when you, I guess you <laughs> kind of can get pretty carried away with uh, these sort of these sorts of things, but here we got GHC being helpful and telling us that we don't actually need stuff. That's that's good. I like that. It's nice to have. Okay, my G is not used here either. Cool, cool. Nor here. In fact, not even world. Hmm. Yeah, we use object name. Let me just get rid of the do and just make it in. Thank you very much for the follow. Imaj Hiebaim? Shibaim? Hopefully that's right. Imad? If that's okay if I call you Imad. Thanks again. Every follow helps. And then we can make this an in. It's just a single expression. Don't really need the do there. And... We don't use the G here. So are you a Haskell hacker as well? Or are Haskell curious? Probably get rid of this binding too. That's nicer. I don't think anything else. Anything else refers to it in that scope, so that's good. Clear in. This isn't used either. Okay, cool. Type error is gone. And now, the effect of a refactor is that you're just changing the code for ergonomics and developer experience and, and maintainability. Um, but our behavior shouldn't change. Our program should still be the same. So I demoed that at the beginning of the, of the stream. We should still be able to pick up the shovel, dig with it. We have the weird coin. We should be able to drop the shovel, right? Um, pick up the shovel again, you shovel on the door. Uh, lock front door. There we go. Yeah. Haskell curious. Cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. I did Python for a long, long time, like 10, 10 some odd years. And Python was really good to me. Yeah, I love the community. It's very nice. I don't know what it's like lately, but um, yeah, my favorite thing was going to PyCons. Did a couple of talks there back in the day, actually.
Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, still, everything's still kind of working the way, way we want. Look in the brawly bucket. All, right, all, all the stuff. I think that one might need some work. Not for aliases for items, but um, yeah. We can quit. All right, let's review what we've got. Oh, that needs to be fixed. Just a small textual thing. Um, actually, that was, I think, kind of an unnecessary change. I think that was the lenses stuff, but I'm, I'll just leave it in. It's fine. And so exit current room, that looks pretty good. Our good old ad world log message. And this is, this is in the next, we'll see in the next phase of this refactor um why i really wanted to do this notice how when we used we added the add world log message function and we used that in all those places where we were manually reconstructing the game state and, and doing that that record update syntax we replaced it all with that one line we're going to be able to do that in more places with different functions where we're kind of where i kind of pull things apart manually and, and put them back together uh, we can encapsulate those now a little better and start programming in this little like world interpreter so we can make little mini programs for like handling verbs um which which will be re really nice so right now the code's expanding a little bit because we kind of did this very formulaic um restructuring where we changed kind of some high level types added a new monadic layer to our computation so we added some state to our computation, so now we should be able to make this um, shrink back down again. Um, that looks all pretty good. Uh, let's see, yeah, changing everything to lifts and puts and pulls. Good. So let's commit that. Kind of work in progress this. Uh, add state t layer to handle uh, state game. Just handle time, whatever. Okay, next part. Do we have time? Oof, we're running a little bit low, but maybe we can make it. Okay. Uh, uh, let's look at, yeah, so kind of like this. Right, this is what I want to be able to do. Add world log message, unlock door, move player. Right. Straightforward. Updating the state. Updating the world state. I want to do more of that and more of the code. So we could be able to move like move player up to the top level. It only really hand happens in handle lock. But we could. Same with unlock door. Um let's see. This pattern too is off, like I was saying, is oft repeated. I want to compress that down with our lens friend.
And the other thing that we could refactor here too is now that we have this state layer, we could have an easier function that gets um, these object ID lookups, these object lookups. I could reach into the game state, reach into the world, do the lookup on the database. It can throw the exception error. We should be able to rewrite this as simply as Yeah, world object, say. Uh, what do we use? The object name. By name. All right, we should be able to compress it down to that. Now that we have these, these, these capabilities. Um, yeah, so why don't we do that quickly? And I think... Next week, uh, we'll just keep working on that and doing more of looking for more opportunities to, to do that. So get world object by name is the name of the hand helper function we're going to do now. So you get object and in inventory, get on inventory objects. Probably even call it get object by name. Now monad state instance, game state M, monad of M. I'm gonna take a text, the object name, and I can return and accept T game error M um, game object. And object name needs to be in scope for this to work do we don't really need to bind it Let's just return it Oops, sorry, that's supposed to be a fat arrow. That's what that type error is. Yes. Okay, world's not in scope. Need to get that out. We know how to get a world. Boom. So let's fix that. We just took that, that we just named it differently, that's all. Oh, we did use object ID in here. Uh, that's okay. We can just make this return the object ID and the object. Go back to object by name. So we'll need to bind that. And then we could just turn pure couple of the object ID and the object. I should all compile and be happy. And it is. Handle drop. Yeah, so we pick up the shovel. Drop shovel. 
Yeah, that still works. There you go. All right, so now we should be able to rewrite more of these helper functions with this state layer stuff, and it gives us just a little bit more flexibility, uh, compresses down some of this code here in handle drop. Um, yeah, monads are great, I'm gonna say. Pretty all right. Um, yeah, and I think that's, that's about time. So thanks again for tuning in to the stream. Uh, you're watching me, Agent Ultra. Uh, you can find me, uh, you can find actually the Discord at the link above, uh, declarative.tv. And there's a channel for this stream there on that Discord server where we can chat about your projects. We can chat about this project and what you saw here. We'll stage up, the we'll stage up these changes here. Uh, you can also find this code on GitHub at Adventure Engine and follow me there or follow this project. And I'm also moving over, I think, from Twitter. I used to, I still have my Twitter profile on there, at Agent Ultra, but you can also find me now on the Fediverse. I'm trying out Mastodon. And my home server is at types.pl, so you can find me at Agent Ultra at types.pl. And give me a follow from wherever you are in the Fediverse as well. And uh, yeah. So let's give this a good message. Uh, get object by name. Uh, game object and it's ID entity ID a name in the world database. Uh, I'm just going to rename that one. Reword it. I think it's fine. And we'll push that up. Cool. So there you go. Get that code. Check it out if you like. Uh, build a project. Tell me what you think. And may, may your types always be free. May your types always check. And your monads always be free is usually what I say. Really. May your monads always be free and types always check. I don't know. But enjoy. Happy hacking out there. And we'll see you next week. Tuesdays around 8 o'clock in the evening. <laughs> Bye.